Ahoy everyone! So today I'm going to be talking about how to install a solid state drive into an iMac SL. This particular Blueberry iMac SL from approximately 2001 is very special to me. This is Minty the Second, one of my favorite computers. Please say ahoy to Minty. If you do not want to, I will figure out where you live. Today's video is going to be filmed in a little bit of a strange way because Minty already has a solid state drive. I'm taking it out and using it for a different project. However, the steps should be just about the same. First things first, here are some parts you're going to need to have ahead of time. Now, as some of you might know, um, the iMac SL uses an IDE hard drive, which means that the easiest way to get a new drive installed is not to use a modern SATA SSD, but in fact to use a compact flash storage card. You see, Compact Flash uses the same protocol and even the same pins as IDE, which makes it an obvious solution. The one that I've had the most success with has been the SanDisk Extreme 64GB drive. Something I didn't know that I wish I knew ahead of time is that there are actually two different standards of IDE. There is a 40-pin and a 44-pin style IDE drive. 44 pins is for laptops, and so it won't work inside of an iMac. What I ended up using, and I've had a lot of success with, is this StarTech.com adapter. Um, but you'll notice something interesting about it, uh, which I'll go into a little more detail in the future. It has both a 40 and a 44 pin out, so you can use it for all sorts of projects. The main issue is, however, that this floppy power adapter doesn't actually exist inside of the iMac. You're going to want one of these Molex adapters that converts from a Molex into an IDE floppy drive power. Um, I found them for about 9 bucks on Amazon, it comes with a pack of 5. So I've got all these adapters lying around, I'm not sure what to do with them yet, but I'll figure out something. Of course, all of these parts are going to have their links down in the description below, so if you want to buy those, uh, feel free to wait for them to come in and then follow along with the video when you're done. I'm going to take a page from Douglas Adams' handbook. You're going to want a towel for this. Uh, a lot of people like to repair iMacs with the screen facing down, and while I don't typically prefer to do that, um, you're going to want to use a towel in this case to keep the screen safe. Um, it's pretty fragile, and this case is arranged in such a way that you can put a, a lot of weight on the screen that isn't supposed to be there. So once the machine is either facing down or on its back, uh, you're going to notice there is a little tray. This is how you would typically get to the RAM or to replace the PRAM. You can get this open with a standard screwdriver, um, or what I like to do, um, I use a lightning phone adapter. It goes right into the little key and opens right up. Next, you're going to notice this little door at the bottom. Uh, it actually opens just as easily with a lightning phone cable as well. So once it's up, you'll notice four screws. Um, you'll want to take care of these, usually in alternating order, because there is a lot of pressure on these screws. Once they're all out in a safe place, uh, you can go up to the top of the device and you'll notice two little screws right by the foot of the device. You'll want to take these off too. Now the fun part. It is going to feel like you are breaking your machine when you remove this piece of plastic from the bottom. Um, you're probably going to hear a loud popping noise, but don't worry about it too much. Uh, as long as you haven't broken any pieces of plastic, you should be fine. It's going to come up from the back side towards the front, and then once that's out of the way, just put it, you know, on the side. Now once you get to the metal grating, uh, you're going to have to unscrew quite a few screws. These are kind of a hassle to get in and out, and I hope this isn't a bad idea, but I don't actually leave them in uh, because the bottom of the device fits so snugly on top that it doesn't tend to move around. Uh, just be aware that these screws might get lost in the case somewhere, and you really don't want that to happen. So try to use a magnetic screwdriver if you happen to have one on hand. The grate comes off straight up, and once that's out, uh, you're going to see the bottom side of the motherboard. Uh, this is the most convenient way to swap out your PRAM battery, so if you have been putting that off, now's a great time to put one in, but it's not essential to this process. You're going to notice the IDE drive in the slot upside down. Uh, you're going to want to remove the IDE power, which is very difficult to do, but trust me, you won't break anything if you tug, and the IDE connector before you remove the drive. There are also a few screws you might want to look out for, by the way. Once the drive is out, you're going to want to keep it on hand just in case something happens to your solid state. Now, the IDE adapter itself comes in a little plastic bag, and this is super, super hacky. But what I like to do is I typically take the bag and I put it inside the drive bay so that the exposed circuitry does not touch the metal drive bay. 
This is probably a really bad idea, but it seemed to work for me in the past, so I'm going to tentatively recommend it. Once the compact flash storage device is in the adapter, you simply connect it up using the IDE adapter, and then you just take the Molex adapter, plug it into the existing IDE floppy power adapter, and then hook it up to the device. Once that's done and everything seems to be somewhat in place, uh, you just screw everything back on. And would you look at that? 64 gigabytes of solid state space. Now you're free to do crazy stuff like, you know, heaven forbid, dual booting uh, Mac OS 9, X, and Linux. Also, the boot up time is much faster. And strangely enough, the machine is completely silent. It was very jarring to me at first. Anyway, that's all for today's video. If you have any comments on this, uh, feel free to leave them down below. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already, because I make videos like this all the time, or at least I'm, I'm going to. This is like my second one. But if not, I appreciate you being here. Bye-bye.